Okay, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming today. Um, and especially thank you, Jean Warren, for being here. I'm gonna do a little introduction and then we'll pass it away, pass it over to Jean. So Jean's paintings are included in public, corporate, and private collections with work reproduced in several pub in several publications. Uh, with a BA in art education, Jean has taught at the elementary and adult levels. She's a signature member of the National Watercolor Society, California Watercolor Association, and the Society of Layerists in Multimedia. Jean teaches at Sebastopol Center for the Arts in Sebastopol, and her home studio is in Bodega Bay. I'm a little jealous about that. I like that area. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there's a quote here from Jean. It says, I'm a watercolor artist passionate about the creative process. I look for the rhythms or movements of the design, the play of light and the meaning or feeling behind what it is that I want to capture. The oozles and drips, the mingling and glazing of pigments on wet or dry paper give watercolors uniqueness, versatility and unpredictability. And I love responding to whatever, wherever it may take me. Uh, that's a fantastic quote. So I'm going to hand it over to Jean, and I'm really looking forward to the workshop. And again, if any of you want to join, we still have some spots available. Good. Thank you, Vicki. Um, yeah, a lot of um, preceding talk was um, around inspiration, how we, how we get our inspiration and what what inspires us? And I have found over the years, the one thing that inspires me the most is the doing, just getting in there and doing, um, pushing the paint around. And, um, but other things too, um, the uh, sketching while walking, I've been doing that a lot. Uh, my husband photographs and I have, he, he gets really kind of upset if I don't have my sketchbook with it, with me, because we stop at various places and, um, and then meet up with each other. I sketch and he photographs. Um, and so we do that a lot. And also plein air. When we moved from New Jersey to California, I was, um, I found this woman, her name was Dorothy Davis. And she took us out plein air painting at six o'clock in the evening when the shadows were long and the sun was golden on everything. And that hooked me. I mean, that, that, was, um, that, was, that was it. Even though I was <clears throat> painting in acrylics and oils beforehand, um, watercolor what seemed to be the medium that I, um, could take outdoors much easier. And it had all these crazy things that happened. It was, it, I mean, it was, it was so, um, it's so exciting. And with my watercolor, with my oils and acrylics, I could just keep painting on them forever. There was no ending place, it seemed. With watercolors, it sort of told me, okay, this is the time to end this painting. Um, so, and also our memories give us ideas and um, words and uh, calligraphy and, and texture also gives us inspiration. And we're gonna be doing all of these things next week. Um, so first of all, I'd like to show you this um, PowerPoint that I have and with some of my sketches and then we'll go into the painting. So let me um, see, first I have to share my screen. Oops, oops, I'm gonna share that. Let's see. Over here. Show you from the beginning. <clears throat> So these, this, and I'll show you the, the books in person too, but this is a page from an old book that you can actually put this watercolor ground on top of the pages. <clears throat> you can still see, I don't know if you can see my cursor. Can you? Um, yes, we can see the cursor. Okay, you can still see some of the writing, but if you wanna 
cover up that writing. You can just um, put this, uh, it's, it's white, but they all, it also comes in a transparent. So to put that over the page first, so that it actually makes the page a little bit heavier too and, and stronger. Um, so that's, so you can find all these different shaped books, old books and put them to use. <clears throat> also collage pieces just to, if you have older paintings sometimes you can find jewels in these older paintings and just cut them up and um, place them around the page and just experiment I've done paintings from my collages this is a paint there's this paint and collage combined you can see where the collage collage pieces are right in here and the rest is paint. And I think I went back and forth between the paint and the collage back and forth. Didn't necessarily, didn't put one on, do one first, I think paint and then, you know, back and forth with it. <clears throat> this was um, a large sketch, watercolor sketchbook, 11 by 14 that I take out as I'm walking as well and I doodle. All these pen lines are just doodling on the page. And then I come back later um, in my studio to put the color on. But, but I find that I'm more, a little bit more um, creative with the color when I can, um, I'm not trying to de depict what I see in nature so much. I'm, I can just go crazy with the color when I come back. But so walking, so I would maybe this is a tree and then I walk a little further and I see some other kind of funny branches. And then I walk further and I, you just put them on the page wherever, wherever you want to and not necessarily make up a scene as you're walking and just kind of doodle and one thing goes over top of the next. And we're kind of on the second day, we're gonna kind of do something like this. And then when, then you come back and, and the paint on it. This was kind of the same thing of doodling. It's more, we can see the trees in the background. This is more representational, I suppose, than what I saw. Um, but things aren't, when I'm home and I don't have the scene in front of me, it's, it's almost I can then experiment even more with the paint. I'm not worried too much about what it looks like. So you can see some of these are my first washes, the lighter ones, and then they just build up with layers and layers. So oftentimes my sketch isn't just one sketch. I'll try to make a couple of different variations. Do I want a, a square? Do I want a rectangle? Do I want a ladder of sorts in this? in front of this building, kind of experiment with my sketches. And this is what I'm going to paint today. So this was a sketch of uh, that I did being a passenger in a car in the car. And we were going up to Tahoe. And <clears throat> I would see these things, I would see a stream and and the rocks and I would see then hillsides and I and, and then you just kind of just put them together as you as you're um, riding in the car <laughs> and it, it kind of helps with our memory too because we're passing these so fast and then I'm looking at my page to do all these kind of doodles of course not not so much looking at the scene because it's already passed me by um, so that's what um, some of the things that I use for inspiration. Jane, this is Susan. Do you typically, when you're sketching, only use a, a marker or a pen? Often, good question. I like to use a pen because sometimes even those lines that may not be the perfect lines are more expressive and they're oftentimes your first thought kind of lines too. So when people use and when I use a pencil to sketch, I find I spend more time erasing than I do really creating, if that makes sense. Um, so yes, I use pen. And 
and paint if I can too. So now can I share my, um, Vicki, can you, um, my workspace, can you, yeah, okay. So I just put this here to show you, this is something I did the other day. Um, we'll be talking a lot about, and let me know if you can't hear me. Um, this is right next to the computer. So I'm using the audio from the computer. So sometimes I have to talk a lot louder than I think I should. Um, but these, these kinds of things with simultaneous contrast of dark, dark against light, and then it switches from light against to dark going on in a painting, help us to walk through, to get move around in our painting when we do that. So and I'll, I have some other paintings to show you. I have other paintings to show you, but let me get some washes on here. And then as things dry, I can show you some other paintings. So I'm bringing my water over here next to the computer. And um, I love to have people talk to ask me questions. So um, please do. So if you have a question, then you can just simply unmute, ask your question, and then and then if you would put yourself back on mute, that would be great. Yeah. So I have um, sprayed my paints. While ago, I'm going to spray a little bit more. And I'm going to put some, I like to start off my page with some wet areas and some dry. And there's no rhyme or reason as to um, where I put this wetness. Because different things, the brick paint, the paint will break in different places or different ways, of course, when the paper is dry versus being wet. So it's just kind of fun to have the different, um, again, it's kind of a, I love surprises. So it's kind of a, a while you're While you're doing your painting, can you speak just a little louder? Oh, sure. And sometimes you'll have to forgive me if um, if I'm. Uh, you can keep telling me that because sometimes I will be drifting off. It's hard to paint and talk at the same time, right? <laughs> so I'm going to use my favorite triad, which is Windsor Blue, Windsor Red, and New Gamboge because you can get really good grays out of this combination. But that's not, that's not to say that I can't use other um, colors when I want to, but, I, but these are sort of like what they've said, what they've talked about years ago. These are my mother colors. These colors will be kind of um, unifying the whole painting. But if I want orange, I mean, I can make orange with these colors. I can make all the secondaries, of course. But if I want a different kind of orange, if I want more of a, but the thing is with these colors too, you can, I can get a, a, um, a cool gray, a warm gray. But if I want a different, real different other color, kind of color, I certainly I can sh dip into any of my colors. Mm -hmm. This is Kathy. I just want to say how much I appreciate your kind, gentle way and your okay. method of teaching. Um, it's really lovely. Thank you. Thank you. So, plus, um, plus, last time when she was here, this is Susan, uh, we had a ball in her class. It was one of the best workshops ever. Because anything goes, right? 
Absolutely. Now that, now that I showed you the grays, I really like some of the grays. So what I want is sort of this. I'm going to use it for a brush. This is my two. This is my two inch um, land nickel brush. So these these washes I call my rhythm washes because they set kind of set the mood right away. They're kind, it's kind of my intent, right? I think I want it to be warmer as I, as I come into the foreground. I want, I want these washes to drip, kind of drip and to just be Jean, this is Susan. So how how would you describe the paint to water ratio right now? Okay. That the paint to water ratio now is even it's tea, I guess. You know, it's the consistency of tea. And as, as I paint into this, we will talk about more about paint to water ratio. I just want to get some color on here. And you may have noticed that this is kind of a radial structure in that these rocks on this side, everything is kind of coming off of those rocks. And I'm loving this kind of spatter down here. This is why I like to work with this with the my table kind of slanted too. And now at this point, watch your whites because if I want to save, and of course some of these colors are going to be so light anyway, they can sort of be your whites. So I like to start off with a mess. Okay. So, so that kind of that kind of tells me that this was a scene that I was excited to get to Tahoe and this was kind of this dreamy oh being in the in the in the woods and I'm really anxious to get there and uh, I'm expecting to be in the snow and that type of thing. So now if I were to put some paint on here, I would think about, you know, where do I want to start? And the rocks, so I think I want to come down from the trees. I want to show some, um, first of all, I'm looking at the, what the paint is doing too, and I know I want to get really some, um, Jean, we've been asked if you could talk a little bit louder. Yeah, I know. And Martha, if you have a question, we've asked you to unmute and ask your question. So, okay, maybe if I sit, I can do this too. So you can hear me a little bit better if I'm closer, right? You can hear me better now? Yes. Um, so now, if I'm putting this paint on, the page where there's wetness. I already have water on my page. So I want less, less and less wet on my brush. So to let the paint stay where it is. Is her board on a slant? The board is on a slant and it's it's sort of like right here. <laughs> it's like um it's kind of weird to paint like this, but 
you can hear me better. Yeah, the board is at, at a slant. So I want this, I want this area to just kind of be misty and um, I want to have fuzzy edges up here is what I want to say with this. So I wanted to start now because they've been still wet. And actually this, I might want to go into some Naples, even though, because Naples is a different flavor of wetness. So you can see my sketch. I'm not really looking at the sketch now even. Um, it's But you want to make a painting of, of this scene. I know how it felt by, you know, you, you know how it feels by being there. So just get into your, into your kind of, you know, if, it, if it drips down the page, let it, let it go. That's not going to be, that might be, Somebody might think, oh no, I got it. I have to get rid of that. But it's um, it might, it'll be so much lighter. So so I guess what I'm what I tried to start to say was if this painting takes me in a different Jean, could you say that again louder? If this painting takes me in a different way than what I initially thought, I and mean, it turns out to be completely different than my sketch, that's fine, absolutely fine. Um, I want this painting to be um, kind of an experience in its own right and not really a depiction. So. Um, so now I'm adding, I'm dropping in color. It's hard to see on the screen. Dropping in color. Jean, Sherry's asking um, if you already know the result of your painting or what you hope to achieve at this stage. Um, my... No, I do not know. Well, I what I want to achieve is the is the initial intention, the the mood, the feeling of being up at Tahoe, the excitement of going there, and this is what I'm going to find, and all that. The, right, and you're using your sketch as a guide. I'm using my sketch as a guide, right? But really, um, I'm I'm really kind of using my memory because I've been there so often and I know the landscape. I, it's the, and, and if this painting takes me elsewhere in terms of being a complete abstract or if it, if it looks different than the sketch, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, I love the process of painting more than the product. So, and for me, that's what it, that's what painting is all about, is, is actually the, the process of painting. And, and seeing if, you can, if we can discover all these different things going on in our page, rather than responding to what the paint is doing, rather than depicting what the scene is. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me, yes. <laughs> So um, I want to get some color into here. Even though it's 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 also an intuitive painting, and it's really hard to um, paint intuitively when you're 
painting a demo for sure, right? Painting intuitively really entails being by yourself out there in nature and, and letting nature speak to you, and, you know. <laughs> and um, so, but anyway, I want to get some color out of here. I want these, I want these trees to kind of drip down. I think that would be really fun. So right now I'm just kind of looking at this um, in terms of um, does it speak to me? You know, is it? And it, it, it I like it so far. So, so now I want to think about how it. Some lights and darks, and this is water here. Is your paper still wet or damp? It is, yeah. Hanadi asked, what is the flat brush that you're using? I knew somebody was just going to ask that. <laughs> um, this is, um, boy, what is it? It's a, a Richardson. It's the Jack Richardson brush, and it's one and a half inches. And um, I could use, I could paint a whole painting with this brush. It doesn't, if you buy a brush like this, when it's wet, make sure it has a chiseled edge on the top of it. Don't know if you can, if you can <laughs> see how skinny, oh, oh yeah, how, see how skinny it is. This, if, make sure it has a, um, it's chiseled edge right there, and then you can maneuver it and and twist it around. And get, you can get skinny lines out of it as well as big, broad expanses. So it's, it's for me, it's painting and responding to what the paint is doing on the page. What it, it's all about. If the paper is wet underneath, then I need almost to wipe my brush off with no water on my brush and mix my, get, mix my paint into a cream consistency, almost thicker than cream sometimes if you're, if you're um, using it. But if you want the paint to stay, you put it on the page. Then I think I want the least area. Check this again. And if I turn it here. Let's see. Float some, float some water in. And we have to we have to do this sometimes too. We have to hold our page so to let the water out. spill down the page. Did you say you painted this way plain air too? And do you rewet your page? Sure. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm still looking at the overall whites that I want to leave. This is going to be water, like a waterfall coming down. So I made, kind of made that up. That wasn't, I didn't see that. Gene, a little louder, please. <laughs> 
Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I didn't. This water, this kind of going to be a waterfall here. I didn't. I didn't see that. I'm making that up. And this tree. Um, let's see. Some more, some bluish blue. This is more of a um, cerulean. I think I want to give some more to paint around. I'll be starting to paint around things. And that's a good way for you to, it's a good way for you to also. Uh, know how to know where you want your whites to be left if you paint around things so then we're really looking at we're painting the shapes because we don't paint things anyway we want to paint the, what the shapes are maybe i'll just come in here with this wash i just don't like it So I want things to be connected to there's um, I think connection connecting our um, the connections of things to repeating shapes repeating colors is um, so it's all pretty wet you see that blue. So some of this blue is mixed in with the other blue. So it's not too, too foreign. So I'm going to want to have dark on one side of that rock and then light on the other side. When it's wet is the perfect time to drop in color. I think I'm gonna get some slippery stone. So I'm seem to be mixing the same color green up here. So I think I want to add some more red in there. So I'm gonna have to stand up. Get some. I also like indanthrum, indanthrum blue. Let's see, it's similar to 
uh, ultramarine blue, but it really has some, a lot more body to it. Let's get some of that. Jean, did you just say in dandrin? Yeah. Yeah, I love that color blue. Because it doesn't granulate like it, um, ultramarine, but um, it's really gives it a punch, that blue. Yeah. I want some, some real darks under the rocks for some reason. Some real dark. And then soften this edge here. Soften some more edges. Just up here, right? Also, I think adding some mystery to, to our paintings really is kind of fun to do. So that's what I'm trying to do up here, add mystery. Let's see the top of that tree. Jean, Sherry's asking what kind of paper you're using. Arches, Arches 140 cold press. Thank you. So again, it might need to be tilted to let the paint run different ways. So we don't always, we don't have to spell everything out all, all the time. Let's see. These trees need to, I want these trees over here to be a, a grouping kind of. That's what I had envisioned. This, it would be one shape over here. See what that chiseled edge can do. It can scrub out. So 
Rob wanted to pay him to eat some rock here, I guess. To kind of look over this rock. But yet I want the water to be light. So maybe some dark here, dark here for the rock. Jean, you need to move your head back just a little for us. Yeah. <laughs> Much as we love to look at it. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> I know when my husband, my husband was um, recording me for my classes, um, <laughs> recording afterwards. Oh dear, I have the my head. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's really colorful. <laughs> right. So, and this is supposed to be just really Well, I want this one to be gray, I think. Finish. These rocks, I need to define these rocks a little bit. Maybe I'll stop and show you some paintings, show you some things. Let this dry. And if I want it to be wet, I can. No, maybe I'll keep going. <laughs> Um, the colors are beautiful. Thanks. It looks pretty good on the screen, too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's these things like this that you can't plan those things. And, and this thing coming down. Let the oozles of watercolor play, play for you. Yeah. I need to clean this. It's good to, so just looking at the screen is kind of, because this is so big in front of me, looking at the screen is the same thing as taking a picture of what you're doing with your phone, if you have a phone like that, because then you can see it really small and tiny. And when you look at it that way, it's like almost like, oh, I know what I need to do next kind of thing. It's really interesting. I'm not so sure that I want the, um, so now my, my um, boutique person is coming into play, right? So I'm not so sure I want blue there, but yet I want this rock to be light because it's simultaneously, yes. I want to have, so I want this top of this rock. Jean, we're struggling to hear you again. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> no, 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 but keep telling me. When I, um, get to thinking I talk don't talk as loud I guess well you're very soft-spoken anyway so you, you know right, right. so I'm thinking that trying to find the right color I think I'm a dark greenish to go behind this rock so I knew this was kind of wet in here. So this is like cream, probably not heavy cream, but it's, it's enough, enough. The paint has enough body to it that I know it's not going to explode on me. And then, and then just take a wet brush to. Um... So I broke my hand a while ago. 
now I find myself painting with both hands sometimes. I was just gonna say, I'm so impressed you're painting with your left hand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the classes were still going on, so I still, I had to do it, so. Yeah, wow. That's another way to, to ins inspire, right? To paint with your left hand once in a while. Yeah, well, I want dark behind those rocks. Yes, maybe some of this yellow could come down. Keep going in that yellow. Maybe change it up. Use some quinacridone gold for ch the change. There's a couple of rocks up here on the flip side. We repeat this, repeat the yellow as it goes across a little bit, maybe here, maybe to have different yellow, yellow sheets always said change, don't use the same color, change it somewhat, darken it or lighten it or cool it or warm it, don't use the same yellow as you go through the rocks. Jean, is that a half size sheet? It's a little bit bigger than a half sheet, um, just because half sheets get kind of skinny sometimes. They're, they're, I don't like the, um, the parameters of a half sheet. But, um, do you find that? Does anybody feel that way, that they feel a little bit too skinny? I agree. Yeah. Yes. So how much wider is this one then? Um, it's about, it's like eight was. So half sheets, what, 15 inches? This was 20, uh, yeah, 15 by 22, 15 by 22. This is 24 by 17. Oh, okay, interesting. And I had a frame that size. I don't know why I got a frame that size for another painting once, and then I, lost track of what painting I needed it for. So I never used that frame. So I mean, but this is a good, good. Um, so I've been painting that this size in a while. So the paper is 17 by 22. 24. 24, 17 by 24. Okay, got it. So the more mystery we put in our paintings, they will, the more they'll be attractive to other people, I think, right? Because they can, they'll, they can imagine their own experiences. And, you know, Not 
not that we're painting for other people. So let's see, what are these rocks? So sometimes I like to really get some texture in these rocks. That's going to be one of our days texture and trying to figure out. What kind of texture we need and why we need it. It's just another design element that um, we should take advantage of. Right? So with this, so I like this brush too. It's my just a what is this? Oh yeah, it's Daniel Smith. Just a even an inch. Yeah, I guess it's an inch. Skinny because I can get some. Start to get, uh, I was going to say, get more uh, dry brush effect too. I don't know if that looks too dark for the rest of the page. My husband just told me we have an elephant seal on Doran Beach. We do marine mammal rescue work. Wow, how close is that beach to you? Oh, we can see it from our house. It's just, um, wow. But he's probably just resting. They, they are uh, away from their moms for the first time. And so they just kind of need to crash on the beaches for a while. <laughs> but we have to put up signs. Right, so, so sometimes you need to go back in the water to get it darker that this rock may have, I may figure out something else to do again. Kind of really into that, you know, it's a part of the water. So maybe scrubbing out some rock. 
lifting. So don't forget that you can lift with, if you have riggers, these, these real long skinny brushes, you can just kind of do this. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. I'm going to make proposals for you. It's just right. I also need to use some sticks. Hmm. Need some a stick action. So Other blocks here. So after a while, the palette gets kind of compromised. Allowing it and then let it fade away. <laughs> this here. Just got two. Um, to learn to show the light of the star. So this lock, I mean, these are just shapes. Right?
So you want to say rocks without really saying rocks. Say, you know, fish bait. We don't always have to spell all these things out. Show the edge of that big rock. Anyway, um. So then you have to think, okay, what are the um, the whites? Uh, I do like to keep whites. Some people, I mean, you can paint your whole page too if you want. I, this doesn't have to be all white up here. We, we, don't, we don't always have to save our whites. I, mean, I think it, watercolor, um, we read this in, in the books and we you know, try to Rex Brandt years ago, that was our goal to save our whites. But um, not always the case. And then let's see what we see. So do I want that white to, do I want this rock to be white or do I want it to stand out as a, as a rock? This shape could then if these are let's see if we so what if this were let's see that be part of it and then we can have it along that side. These rocks are great. Of course, they're in more of their in more of the uh, foreground, so they should have some more detail. But there, there's a lot of detail in there. Yes, it needs to be light. This guy is so interesting to me. I might need to have another one in front of me. So this isn't spelling out things. So here's where I need to have it. This
So some places could even become majority, I suppose. Okay. Hi, Jean. This is Jane. I'm wondering, is your paper damp in any place at all, or are you just softening edges when you need water at this point? Um, it is damp all through here. It's kind of um, still pretty damp, but I am soft, mostly softening now. Gee, this is Vicki. Uh, Dana B is asking, what's the cloth that you keep wiping your brushes on? Oh. Is it? Can you see it? Oh yeah, it's just an old dish towel. Okay, thank you. Sure. Trying to get away from using so many paper towels. Right? So let's see, this, um, I wanted to have, a, I, my sketch had a rock here, but I don't think I want one there now. So maybe this, get the head of it right here. Do I want more of a demarcation there? I want this to be dark. Yeah, maybe. There's always spatters. Get that water 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 bottle there. I wanted this to be light, but it's not completely light. So this is where that drips down. So maybe I'd want to have this in. Um, there's a couple of rocks up here though. So So the, the appearance of this, this is supposed to be a rock and too. That might be the solution because that big blob of paint looks kind of weird. Can come in. Yeah, this is not as easy as it is. This is really coming together beautifully. I'm wondering, is your only reference the black and white sketch, or do you have something in color somewhere around? 
no, it's the, the sketch. And so, your memory. And my memory. And, you know, it's, it's outdoors. So we know what all the colors are. I mean, if I were to do a garden with specific grays and bright greens and different kind of colors, yeah, that's a different thing. But um, so this is really kind of a perfect way to um, just paint and respond to what's happening on the page and, and to work with the uh, water. The, Thank you. You know, to, to see what will, will happen. Rather than to worry about the depiction. And that's, I think, why I like sketches to work from sketches rather than working from a photos. Photos lie, you guys. <laughs> they, um, they don't tell the whole story, they don't give you the mood of how you felt when you were there. So be careful using photos. They're good for reference points you know, to remember what uh, went on. Uh, it's like it's tough to paint from a photo. It doesn't give you everything. It doesn't give, especially with watercolor. Right? Um, doesn't give you things like what will, you know, what happens unexpectedly. So I'm kind of liking the trees. Um, and I thought I was going to put more color in this hillside, but I'm not so sure. So you can go slowly thinking not for some yellow. And then that, so I think this calls it too much attention. It's too, I really want the attention to be brought down in, in here. So I don't believe in focal points. Um, I think our paintings need to, we need to travel in and around our paintings and to stop in some places more often than others. <clears throat> and not necessarily one focal point. You, need, you could have many interesting places. <clears throat> When I heard Barbara Nietzsche say this years ago, I thought, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> that makes sense. You know, we don't want to be painting wallpaper kind of paintings where everything looks the same, but, but yet um, be careful about center of interest. You don't, want your, you don't want the viewer to get stuck in that center of interest. So. This rock still isn't speaking to me. Different shape. So yeah, this is just an old dish block. So then I can buy new ones when I'm using the old. Color do I want that there? Kind of a maybe warmish, although it's in the background, maybe coolish is what I should be doing. Um, coolish, greenish, really light, almost a gray. It kind of drops down into the kind of drop down into the rest of the painting. Put on this signify layers of trees going going back in the others. So, um, oops, 
drip that way. nice to have also in a painting your um, different color different colors on one side and as they come across they change so this kind of is more muted over here and brighter here so I'm kind of liking that this rock here could stand a chance of being have more color in it though I think so that, is that supposed to be actually that's not supposed to be a rock it is. See, I could make it into rock, but I just don't do it. But it seemed to me kind of washed out. So maybe it needs some of this, some of this pink going across. With watercolor, you know, we can change things, paint on top. Okay. And as this dries, this kind of looks, as this dries, this kind of, this rock here looks like it needs some work with behind it. It's gone past dark on one side, light on the other. Want the paint to flow that way. I don't know, it's a kind of little bit confusing, maybe in the air. Uh, so you could have some of that yellow come give it some stability in the air. Seems like it's floating or something. So this painting really does need some touch ups. And it's It seems like it's just on one side. So the little tweaking always goes on. It takes me sometimes weeks or months to finish a painting. This one is so long. Sometimes I don't want to. Um, I don't want to tweak it too much. It's sometimes it's fun to have these mystery things going on. It's not like strips that are so unique. So sometimes um, leaving a painting that's that's kind of unfinished speak, speaks to me more than. It's good to live with our paintings for a while to, to see if, if we really do need any more more things. Mm -hmm. 
oftentimes we don't. This, this oozel is a little bit funny. It's okay for me, but So, some of this in dandelion, you see the difference between the ginger bloom and dandelion. So, some of that could be brought into here too once in a while. About you, the effect of water. I put it on and use it. some of that dark come down. Let's see. So I think I'll do this thing there and do it there and put everything else. So Jean, when you first started painting and you did the trees in the upper right hand part in there, you said you were going to have to go back and do something underneath them, I thought you said. Um, but you don't seem to be wanting to do that now. So I just wanted to ask you about that. Um, it could stand that in my sketch, I had this lot these lines that kind of, it's hard to see. And, oops. Do you have something that sort of looks like, you see the lines underneath the trees? Mm -hmm. Is that what you meant maybe? Did I say that? I forget what I said. Well, and they, they look like they're floating to me. I want to put something underneath them to yeah, maybe so. Yeah, give them some structure, but I just don't know if. Yeah. Well, let's look at um, what color we would use. Maybe just a darker color than what's there. And then grounding them in a way. Yeah, they do, even though I wanted them to do it, they do. Yep, thanks. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I kept pointing for you to do that. Yeah. It's exhausting watching you paint. I keep, <laughs> it's like watching a football game or something. <laughs> yeah, that's better. 
the kinetic energy I'm using is amazing. Yeah, right. I'm kind of liking these oozles. That's why I, I can't, I want to keep moving them. But yeah, we can't. That is interesting. <laughs> and then it is dependent. So that's probably why, maybe that's why I see my standard that John can turn it. <laughs> Listen to me. Some places could be the You can still see the oozle, but it's moving in that direction. How's that, Dana? <laughs> Well, I'm the wrong Dana, but I think it looks fabulous. Okay, good. It's still pretty bright. Weird. Don't know what to do that corner. You can't quite see that, that corner. I kind of like it, but now I have two light corners over here. What to do, what to do. Kind of like this needs some resolving of the chaos. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy now. I love it. Good. But now, yeah, but <laughs> there is something about just maybe just more paint up in here. Maybe. <laughs> okay, it is equal, kind of equal parts here, kind of with this awkward move. So, so one of my my class assignments recently was to paint the edges first, and. I mean, I think we're going to do this in, in class tomorrow, but I mean, that was my, my classes. We were painting our edges first, and it really helped to, because I was reading something that Skip Lawrence said recently, and he said, get out of the middle. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? He said, get out of the middle. Your action doesn't need to be in the middle. And so by painting the outsides and then coming in, other thing, it seemed like more of the action then was around here and around here, then right smack in the middle, which made the painting much more interesting. So just something to think about. And 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 I and so I'm sort of liking this might be a little bit hard edge, and I could probably get rid of that hard edge. I don't know. I'm kind of liking it now. Kind of brings us zoom into the these rocks. This is okay. There's something about this needs to have, I think, something like what Skip Lawrence was talking about. Something to hold us in in the painting. That's interesting. That's better. This might need some work. I don't know what. Maybe just even a block. Okay. 
So it needs, needs some tweaking along the way. And this you know, so just line can't really on the screen, can't really tell where it's off, but it pretty is. <laughs> and so anyway, like that, we just learn for now. And let me um, let me show you, because we still have time, right, you guys? show you some paintings and talk about stuff. So, this was a painting that, so if we were in person, I'd be bringing all this stuff to show you guys, right? Um, so this is a painting from this, this sketch of, I was going to do this as a, um, demo, but rocks in the stream and the trees. And so I started with rocks and it kind of stayed this way for the longest time. And just now I'm putting in this tree here. I don't know if you can see these lines going up here and here's the tree. And so what it will entail is things like painting around that tree. I use mostly in in dampness. I just keep going with painting around this tree. But then what you want to do, or what I like to do, I would like to have them just light on this side. It's really dark. If I have this really dark, I mean, what I what I would actually do is it's lighter, and then I would come around here and then put this really dark side. If I want it dark on the other side of the tree. So when you light on the under, dark against light and dark against light. Okay. So, it's kind of a mess. So, it's good to see the teacher mess up. One of my favorite things is seeing a teacher bring the painting back when when they mess up. Say hey, what? Bring I love back. seeing a teacher bring the painting back after a mess up or or right. go with it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I want this to 
lot to run, so I just had more paint and less water. And here's some lighting. So lighting is dark. Anyway, that's where the tree will be in this painting. And then Neutral tint dark. Have you guys found neutral tint? Neutral tint is this um, bluish black that is really yummy. I think I have some indigo mixed in there. Anyway. So dark light, and then the light of the tree against the dark background. Okay, let's let that mess her life. She is so here's so here are the trees that I was working on this week. So it's the same thing I talked about: simultaneous contrast. I'm gonna try to just paint trees at different levels on the page. It's always a cool um, project to do. Okay. So this painting was um, in class, we had to start with something and then spin out from there. So the flower was my first shape and then everything else is made up from there on. And this was wet and wet. So we're going to be doing some of that in class where the whole page is wet and, and the, back, the back of the page is wet for, as well. So the page stays wetter longer. And it's just playing with the paint, just making it up, no, nothing to, to look at. We all know what flowers look like, right? And these things were scrubbed out with stencils or um, anything, this is a cardboard, you know, you can make your own stencils, putting them next to each other. So this was um, a painting that had, it was one of those wallpaper paintings had just like nothing to hold your interest really at all. It was kind of an all over design that was pretty um, confusing. So I scrubbed out a lot of areas in the middle and I used gouache too as well over parts of it and then made some parts even darker. And I think it reads really well and not until it was really finished did I look at it and think, oh, it looks like a flower. I didn't even see that before. I think a lot of times I was working on it vertically too. Um, and it was, they were, it was just uh, a design. It wasn't really, didn't, I didn't have any idea as to what it should be. Didn't like that way so much. I like that way, I guess, the best. Or one of the vertical ways is kind of interesting, too. So we paint, in class, we paint. Um, I'm encouraging, going to encourage everyone to paint upside down a lot on our paintings. Even though we're trying to depict something, they, they're they really shapes and it's really all about design. If design doesn't work in our paintings then our paintings aren't gonna, as a whole, not gonna work very well. So we're, we'll do a lot of painting upside down. The painting age, not us. And then this was a painting that, um, I kind of got bored with and then just made this 
mark this pattern, that secondary pattern on it. Now I think it's kind of fun, fun looking. And then painted these things, just did something different when I, when I came to a line. I just did different color, different value on the other side of the line. So this was one of putting the paint on and maybe the flowers and then I probably think, oh yeah, I'm painting leaves. I guess it's going to be flowers. And it's just started out just being um, just something to play, just play around. And then I, most of my action energy was up here. Then I decided to put some of this tape. It's called frog tape that you can put on. And some places I'm not liking it as much because it does look like tape, but then I tried to do separate and wider lines and areas and do things like this to make it, give it a different kind of a interesting thing going on to it. So kind of secondary patterns, think of that in your paintings. If there's a secondary pattern going on, it, it um, kind of revitalizes a, a scene, I think. This is a really just a respond to what the paint is doing again, process painting. Started thinking of a tree, but then this was really um, not working, but now I think it works a lot up there. I don't know, but there's some crazy marks that when you're painting a process type of painting and something goes wrong and you think it's a, a mistake, do it over, do it again someplace else, do that same mistake someplace else, or just turn it upside down or, or horizontally or you know which way and um, paint next to it. We'll, I hope in class we get a chance to do that just by putting color on your page and then deciding oh, what do I, what would look good next to that color? A darker rendition of that color or maybe it's complementary color. Just kind of fool around with painting that way and um, see what it turned. I did another painting of a different thing to show you. See what, see what happens. <laughs> Learn a lot that way by making, there are no mistakes in watercolor. They're just happy accidents, surprises. This was in, plain air. Can you, could yeah. you explain what secondary patterns are? So just like, um, yes. This is, I mean, these are secondary, this is a secondary pattern in terms of, I mean, the whole thing was all about this, these flowers. And so the pattern of the whole composition maybe was this, you know, I, I had some structure going on and we can talk about structures too, you know, you can have, have a, a painting that's all kind of horizontal in feel or vertical, vertical lines. Um, so to have a structure in our design is always helpful. This is, as I was saying, was, is kind of a radial design because do you see where everything came from? This is, everything kind of come, seems to come from that, that, that spot in that page. If you look at um, any painting, they have some kind of a, a design, a geometric design, or even a me meandering design. Um, so that was my first, that's what the painting was about. And then I, these things were a secondary thought you know, to put on there. Okay, thanks. Same with this was, um, these were stamps. And I was just kind of playing with the stamps. I think this was afterwards. And, but it was trees, just trees along the way. But I wanted something else to happen. So then I think I started doing the stamping. And then I drew this. So that's a secondary pattern. Does that make, does that make sense, Susan? Yes, thank you. Oops. 
So these are just kind of um, showing you when you're looking at doors to, um, this is just to illustrate simultaneous contrast, light against dark and dark against light. Okay. Sometimes our, our scenes can be very simple and be effective, right? And so this probably is a secondary pattern. It wasn't really there. That's probably a good example. This is, I don't know why I'm showing you this. This is a painting that um, these things weren't here and I just put these. So I've been painting around. This is actually gesso that we can put over our work and then paint on top of it if we want. Um, in my classes, we were using gouache, but gouache is kind of funny when you start putting watercolor over top of it. it it dissolves as well, you know, and just kind of moves around and you get this milky kind of a mess. But um, try using gesso, it'll stay put and then you can paint over top. Yeah. And I think because it's on watercolor paper, it's um, it's not as slippery as, as if it would be on a gesso canvas, maybe. So this is the painting that was in Susan's um, on the website to, to show, to advertise. Um, this is a place not too far. This is in my backyard up the hill. And I've sketched, sketched it many times and photographed it many times. So I really, really, you know, it was in my my spirit. I really knew what I wanted to say. And it was all about the the hillside being dark under these trees. And then it, this hillside kind of falls away behind, behind this, there's stairs that go down. This is a path and there's stairs, you know, just jump off the cliff there. And then, so, if I'm, and this too is, I just wanted to show you these because most of these are process paintings where I started out with, um, doing the hills and then making trees and just kind of playing and then I think this was an afterthought to make this whole all one big tree because I had I started I had this I had these four things it seemed and they were kind of monotonous and so then I did this so it it's like if you can get in there and paint process painting and make messes and have accidents, purposely make accidents, and then make, and then see how we can get out of the, that trouble. That's when we start learning so much, so much, to, you know, that we never thought of before when we do things like that. So, to, to, to have kind of critique yourself to see if you can um, up with surprises every time you, you do a painting, right? <laughs> like I've never done that before type of thing. So let's go back to this painting and see what it looks like now. So here's another one I'm working on. Here's another one I'm working on where this actually goes this way. And it just started, it started my first washes were kind of this and this. And then I, I painted around these leaves. And so to get the darks. And so it just is something. So to have something, here's another inspiration trivia is to just have something on your on your table to come into your studio to, to paint on something. If you yeah, if you have to come into your studio with a blank piece of paper, that's pretty intimidating. And then maybe then you'll think, well, gee, I need to go put a load of laundry in instead, right? <laughs> so have something on your table to um, play with. That's a, good, that's a good trick. So, yeah, I like looking at it on the screen. It looks better than I can critique it better. I don't know. I don't think it's confusing. Does do you think the water needs to 
be shown here. That's what I was thinking. I, don't, I think it's okay. Well, anyway, yeah. I, think, I think it's kind of finished. So now I would just leave it and really just let it be. And, and so this over here may need to have something like this. like that rocks floating a bit. This seems to be a little bit interesting. Then maybe a little bit darker. So turn, turn your page all which way. Oh, okay. Better, I guess. It's not too too contrived. So just remember, I think it's the feeling, the mood that we want to capture and um, have it speak to people more than, you know, nobody's going to come and say, gee, there were three rocks here, not four. You know, they're not going to say that. They're not. It's not, that's not going to matter. Um, all right. So I guess that's, I guess, I guess I'm early. Huh? That's okay. That's all right. Yeah. What else? So, uh, anybody else? I, have a question? Bob, uh, Bobby Eddie has a question about the white spot on that rock right where you were working. It, yeah. She's asking if, if that's distracting. Or okay. should, if it should be softened a little, the white. It could be softened. Right. But I mean, it, I, I would say, I guess it's the artist's choice. <laughs> I know. And then Bobby, what about that one and this one? <laughs> yeah, there's, so it, things like this probably could stand to wait for later. And so we can, we can do this to kind of, sometimes, all it needs is transitions and maybe just a little like that on one side rather than paint, coloring in that whole hole. That looks better, right? This to me seems kind of distracting. It's kind of weird. So this. Um, yeah, I guess so normally you would just let it sit with it for a day or two and then go back, right? right? Sometimes, yeah, sometimes areas just need transitions to get from one place to the other rather than making, rather than covering up that white. Um, maybe like that, just the transition, just covering up part of it. These, these whites are kind of annoying to me. So it's like, so the, some of these speckles are kind of interesting, but maybe I don't need all of these whites in here too. So yeah, at this point, I like to just put it away and um, think about it and look at it upside down. These two whites are kind of like rabbit ears. What is going on here with those? So maybe even softening, softening this guy would help. But also at this point, look at it, look at it upside down and, and really critique it that way. So like this. I still think there could should could be some kind of structure up here. 
rather than having this whole shape like this. So look at our shapes that we have and are they too similar? Should they be? So if I made, so see this shape here compared to this white shape here is nice. But so what if I were to darken this a little bit more? To, to bring out that shape a little bit more. It's white. I'm using a littler brush when I don't need to. Maybe even more to darken that. You know, like that, this shape now, you can see that shape compared to this shape. And that gives this area some structure rather than just being the same all the way across. This is still annoying to me over here. I don't know what, so I could even put some of this new. Maybe, maybe some of that yellow down here could be into this too. So that's maybe a little bit better. There's something funny going on here. Maybe there could be some yellow along here. So think about your edges. Maybe, maybe that's good. So these things are so light that I know that I can put other color at the top, other colors on the top and um, change them somehow. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and let's see. And so this is kind of funny. Where is that? This shape. Now, that's supposed to be a rock, but upside down it looks kind of hmm, it's all right, I guess. So you can be a critique now that now that you're not painting, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe there needs to be. Could be a hillside full of trees. And remember, it's only paper. So We decide that it's not working. Then it's like, okay, seems to be. So get into trouble and see if you can get out of trouble. That is much darker to me than what you're seeing. See how dark it is? <laughs> that yellow. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Her, her ideas. So Jane, so Jean, this is Susan. 
Um, so maybe just talk about a little bit about what we, the people who are gonna be in the workshop should be prepared for in the morning. Okay. So um, the first day, what I thought we'd do is do some sketching. And I have a, some chairs for you of my sketch, what my sketchbook look like. And we're gonna do some sketching and then really think about values and and then disguise, dis, disguise um, dis, to talk about which way we want them to, do we want them to vertical, to change the format if that needs to be done. Um, and lifting out and oozles and spatter, kind of the same thing we did today, but to get ready, all they need to do tomorrow is look out side there went to go outside to sketch or to um, look at maybe your window can actually frame something as you're looking at outside or even anything around the room a bowl of fruit or an old shoe anything um, and we'll talk about composition and structures and really get into that and then the next day we'll um, get more into to, uh, textures and mark making because the marks we make um, are teaching us what we like. You know, are we a shape painter or a line painter? Uh, I discovered that I like line a lot. Um, so the more we make ourselves make marks, make these marks, we can play with all that. It's good for us. And then the next day, we're really, the last day, we're really going to just play with the paint and start with a splash or a shape and move from there and do process, process painting. Actually, all, all the days we're going to do process painting. Um, that's sort of my thing to do. <laughs> and, um, you know, we'll talk about everything in terms of technique and color theory complements and analogous colors, we, what, what should we be using, when we should be using them compared to complementary colors. Um, warm and cool. So, but basically process painting and, and, and getting in, so improvisation is, enables us to, I think, get, in, get our intuition, intuition in activation mood. Um, the more we process paint to just respond to what's happening on the page, the more we'll be able to access our intuition. And I'll demo in the morning and start out by sketching and then we'll go into painting pretty soon. Because if you're, if you're anything like me, I used to hate the times when we were made to do these value sketches. So it's not gonna be just like that. We're, we'll go quickly from this sketching into the painting. And um, anyway, I guess, you know, and, and then we'll, we'll just have fun. The more we play and we'll allow ourselves to really um, play and have fun, it shows in our paintings, I think. Yeah, I agree. So Does anybody... So this is Vicki, I have a question. So I'm more of a detailed painter, but, but I want to paint like you do. So will all, all will be revealed over the next three days. Is that true? Yeah. How I could get there? <laughs> you can get there. That's a lot of my students say they wanna get loose. A lot of people wanna be loose and especially with watercolor because that's what watercolor lends itself to. It's so beautifully, right? Right. Um, so sure, after I have, I have one man who is very detailed and he'll keep going back to his landscapes and in the detail, but he's loose to begin with. And then he goes into the detail. So you can do it. You can, okay. do, you can do both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And I hope if there's anybody out there that hasn't signed up, I hope you will sign up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll have, just have a lot of fun. Everything you can think of will do. <laughs> yeah. color, color and technique and paint to water ratio is a big thing. 
Yep. If anybody has any last minute questions before we sign off today, Jean, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. It was great. It was always fun to paint with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So uh, if you have a question, you, unmute real quick. Otherwise, we're going to be signing off here in a couple of minutes. Everybody's saying thank you. Have fun painting. I'm so excited. Uh, good. <laughs> you. See, see you tomorrow. All right. Nine, nine o'clock, right? Yes, nine o'clock. Okay. <laughs>